What do you think of when you think of Barbershop Quartet? These young people have a whole new take on just what that means, and they are wonderful. Obviously, each of you has incredible music talent. Why this particular form? Well, when we first met and, and uh, formed this group, we all met in a chorus. And some of us have musical talents outside of singing, but we found that doing like uh, a harmonies and, and singing a cappella with each other was just so satisfying. And it's something that you can do almost anywhere whether you're hanging out together in a room or you're up on stage, all you need is yourself and your voices and a little bit of preparation. The originator was our uh, first choir director, uh, Dr. Workman. Uh, he saw something in us and he, he always tries to get, uh, you know, the youth involved in music. And so he he put us together. He gave us a couple songs to learn, and and it, we took to it like, uh, you know, uh, no, I'm not going to use that analogy. Um, but we took to it really, really, really easy, uh, and we just loved spending time together, learning the music and practicing and harmonizing and and finding those locking chords and 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 it was just it was just fun. We ended up spending a lot of time together that way. Well, now, anyone who's studied musical groups and their history know that um, four or five or six or how many people you have, it's not so easy to always get along. I mean, yeah. once the real performing goes on, there, there are challenges. So what makes this group uh, function well? And what are some of the challenges? Well, at first, I think it was very easy because we all went to the same school. There was no problem in finding time to be together because we were always there. But eventually we started moving on, going to different places, going to different universities. And, and that's when the real challenges began. Um, and that's where I think we learned that we can't just hang out and happen to sing. We have to make a dedication to learning the music and, and being with each other. What about agreeing on what to sing? Was that, that a really issue? That was surprisingly easier than you'd expect. Um, if nobody really has that much of an idea about what to sing, then whoever has the idea about what to sing, that's the that's what that was what we're gonna sing. Really, uh, a lot of a lot of it's there's so much music out there and yet it feels like there's nothing out there to sing. So we'll be looking through music and just kind of tossing it. No, 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 no. And if one person's like, I like this song, everyone kind of shrugs and says, okay, okay, we have something, let's do it.
and so we did. Okay, so you know you're you're coming alive. Your group is popping up in the age of rap music, selling millions of albums, and Taylor Swift. What makes you take on a form that some people might say, hmm, this is, you know, this is like the 50s and the 60s. Uh, you're young men. Do you ever have this conversation among yourselves? Should we be doing rap instead of uh, barbershop quartet style? Well, first off, retro is always in style. Uh -huh. uh, second off, Maybe if we stayed in like our local community, that would feel this way. We would feel a little bit, wow, uh, we're the youngest people in the room and we only brought the average down to 60, you know? Um, but once we ended up going to the international scene, which was our first time out, we got kind of lucky. Um, we saw a lot of people our age, a little bit older, a little bit younger even, uh, singing this music at the top of their game. And, you know, we ended up making some friends from across the world that uh, made us feel like, okay, yeah, this is its own little group and we can get good. And it's not just a bunch of old men singing together. Yeah, and, and the old you can still learn some things from some of those old men singing we together. We do. We do learn some things from the old men singing together. So, so for the person who is you know, just hearing clips on our discussion and hearing it, hearing you for the first time, what are the ground rules that make this actual uh, barbershop music? Or is that the right term? Is there a barbershop, particular- Barbershop's the right term. There are a couple ground rules. Um, first, four parts, four voices, acapella, no instruments. Second, the melody has to be within the voices. Usually in like a lot of choral arrangements, you'll have the melody floating at the top voice, but in barbershop, you have the melody inside with the harmonies surrounding it. Um, third, there's a chord known as the barbershop chord. It's a, a, a seventh chord. It's a, it's a dominant seventh chord. And there has to be enough, in terms of the competition, at least, there has to be enough of that chord present throughout the song in order for it to be a contestable barbershop song. However, exceptions have been made, rules have been changed, things of that nature are a little more flexible. But the four voices and where the melody is, those are the really, really important ones. Well, you, you, have, you have more than four people in your group, correct? Well, after we uh, did a couple competitions and you know met some more people, we decided that we wanted to uh, look at the acapella scene more broadly. You know, wow. not just barbershop. Okay. Um, and you know, the group has gone through a couple of iterations i would say we found uh, a tenor because our tenors uh they tend to leave you know they just go off and do their own thing who knows what that's about we've had i think i think maybe four tenors at this point um what's your what's your range i, I mean i'm a tenor uh most of barbershoppers are tenors or straight up basses um but in a barbershop language you have the bass the baritone the lead and the tenor usually the baritone and the lead and the tenor are all tenor voices um and the bass is the only bass you know but our tenor section right kept you know we kept finding new ones kept running in and out it's almost a running gag at this point but we found one that was a beatboxer you know, we decided to take a page out of the Pentatonix playbook and see if we can't uh, put some stuff together. Um, that would be like the uh, Havana Senorita uh, mix 
Summer rain, sweat dripping off me me Before I even knew her name La 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 It felt like ooh la 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 Sapphire moonlight We danced for hours in the sand Tequila sunrise Her body fit right in my hand La 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 it when you call me senorita i, I wish i could like pretend i did it but i, I can like touch it Ooh, la, la, la. Shortly after forming this group was uh, around the time the pandemic hit. So, Ooh. yeah, things kind of settled down for a little bit after that. It was a difficult time for any performer of any sort across the world. However, now we do have more than four singers, but that is in the interest of security. If one of our voices is gone, we don't have a quartet. I figured let's double up on these. Let's get two of each. That way we can make sure we have a quartet no matter what happens. You know, barring the worst. Well, what's some of the most interesting uh, opportunities to perform that you've experienced? You, you can perform at weddings, you can perform at parties, corporate events. What's been the most interesting experience you've had as a barbershop quartet? Uh, I'm going to pick three, if that's okay. So first, the experience that made us feel, wow, we really made it. (laughs) Um, That would be, that would be uh, when we were hired to go sing down in Naples, Florida, uh, for a, a local barbershop choir. We were hired to be the closer for the first act. Um, And, you know, they put us in a hotel room. Up until then, we had been sharing four people in one room. (laughs) We had two rooms to ourselves. Uh, We had a guy that was like, hey, if you need anything, I'll do it. You know, I asked for some gummy worms. And he was like, yeah, 
absolutely. I'll get you those gummy worms. I got gummy worms. Um, you Not know, for a singer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> gummy worms are not good to eat right before you have to sing i disagree i disagree <laughs> personally but you know maybe we can talk to like a doctor or something about that all right um in you, my have in your group too. you have a woman in your group so doesn't that break a rule also not anymore not anymore awesome. back uh, right before the pandemic, the Barbershop Harmony Society was moving towards the uh, uh, everyone in harmony, right? That was the that was the push that they were going to make. They saw the writing on the wall. They realized, hey, if we're going to keep this thing going, we need to really be inclusive and we need to try to invite as many people as possible. And there's already a, a women's sweet Adeline and, and barbershop is like the men's version. And, you know, now there's a spinoff, there's sweet Adeline, this other barbershop that's just men's, but the Barbershop Harmony Society, the biggest one of all, is now inclusive to everybody. And so we're free to invite a woman to sing with us uh, for competition. Of course, they could always sing with us for, you know, shows or weddings and whatnot, but for competition, that, that was a different thing. Well, now you said that was one example of your favorite experience. What were the two others that you thought were really- Favorite fun? or interesting? Interesting. So Naples was very cool because not only did we feel extra professional, but we actually got to sing with some of our favorite barbershoppers, uh, a gold medalist barbershop quartet called Signature. Um, we call their style of barbershop Barber Soul. Um, but uh, some another recent event was singing for a wedding, but the groom wanted to sing with us. Uh -huh. So we had to get this groom to rehearse with us and, you know, make sure that he was vocally speaking in shape to uh to sing with us or to sing softer if he couldn't sing <laughs> yeah 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 no it turns out he has a decent voice okay music but he can learn music you know and that's actually the deal with a lot of barbershoppers anyways they don't really read music but they learn it have you ever done barbershop over zoom i'm not asking you today to do that but have you ever had to record in different places using Zoom? Um, it was not something that we, we looked at that and we thought, wow, this sucks. During the pandemic, we tried it. We were like, we thought to ourselves, maybe we can. And then we tried for a second and we said, no, there's no way. This isn't, this isn't. This isn't. Hey, we might try it in the future. I have some ideas for you. So, okay, so what's the next interesting experience you had? Singing with the groom was the second one. What yes. was the one? There was a recording that we were doing for, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to name it because this was okay. a, I'll call this a negative experience. Okay. But it's still an interesting experience where the person that was, getting us to do the recording didn't really seem to be that much of a musician, really. Could kind of make music, but didn't really understand some of the things we were saying. It was asking for some strange things. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we all showed up, we were there and we sang, but we looked at each other the entire time with this like, What's going on here? The the whole time, but you know, it, it wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't. It was. It was just that was a funny experience. We can always look back at that and laugh. That's for sure. Okay, so now um, barbershop is also associated with a certain kind of look. You know, when if you were to ask me what it looks like, I see four guys in striped hats with pinstripe shirts and suspenders. Uh, tell me. <laughs> Do you have a uniform that you wear or do you vary it? Oh, we vary our uniform. Absolutely. 
especially in the competition, it is a kind of expected almost that if you're singing more than once, we got to see a new outfit. You know, everyone has their style. Everyone has their style. There is a group, Main Street, that sticks with that striped uniform with the with the hat and all that stuff. Uh, the first time we went out, we went out with like some silver suits, you know, um, signature. They have these beautiful red velvet shoes that they wear and uh, and matching outfits to go with it. But every time we've gone up there, we've we've been in a different different outfit. We had some zoot suits one time with like some black and white stripes and some salmon colored uh, uh, bow ties and these black and white shoes. Uh, one time we went out in all black. And one time we went out uh, dressed like uh, train conductors. So oh, that's great. Yeah, barbershop is quite a performing um, uh, acapella act. You know, there's there's a lot of showmanship, I'd say. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of my childhood, giving my age away, but some of the rock and roll groups used to have quite a bit of choreography. You'd see four men on stage like the Temptations or uh, similar groups, they'd all be moving together in a certain way. Do you have movements that you do as well, or do you keep it standing still? We, uh, it's, that's also a uh, varied. A song that's like a ballad, we might, you know, be a little more grounded, not really move much, just be expressive and real. But a song like the, uh, Accidents happen, which where we were dressed as uh, train conductors, we had a whole set of choreography uh, written out where we even, you know, turned to the side and did a little choo choo thing and, okay. and you know, looking, okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So there was a
signs are there for us to see most of the time. But sometimes we take chances, ignore the danger signs. And fate can't surprise you with no reason or rhyme. Make sure you learn your lesson, you'll know better next time. All aboard! Accidents happen now and again. Just when you least expect. Just when you think that life's okay. Comes to collect, collect accidents will happen now and again, so don't take it all too hard. If you don't come straight on the thing that you're doing, whatever you're doing is not what you're thinking. bit of choreography there um so it, it really just depends on the song and the performance and the uh, the personality of the group well you you have person extraordinary personality even over zoom i have to say that Daniel. but i want to ask you the tough question um parents these days are always worried about how you're going to make a living so is this your main work or is this now hopefully becoming your main work where are you in this young person's journey to establish solid income? Yeah. You know, I was also really um, cynical when I was younger about the ability of someone to make money off of music or singing or anything like that. I was, I was agreeing with the parents. Um, I thought to myself, well, the only way to really make money off it is to become like a superstar. And that only happens to, you know, 0.1% of people. Um, but after, you know, going to university and uh, meeting people in the community, I, I realized that it's actually way more manageable than, than, uh, than you might think. There's, there's just so much opportunity out there if you're really looking for it and if you're really talented. Uh, you can find it. I, I currently have, a, you know, a nine to five, your regular average job that gives me enough time to do the music things. But I think I'd say I make about like a third of my income from music, from music, whether it's singing at the church or being a director at the local barbershop uh, choir um, or even just singing for weddings and funerals and those things, uh, you, you can actually do a fair bit without having to worry too much. I, I've been asked to, you know, help smaller local groups, you know, out of the, you know, pro bono, let's say. And the reason that I do that is because I think singing specifically, music in general, but singing specifically, is something that a lot more people can do than, than they realize. You know, people think, oh, I can't sing. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You, you'd be an oddity to not be able to sing, actually. And it, it's, it's good for people. It's good for people. I know that the old men that I sing with are a lot younger than they would be if they weren't singing. Um, you know, they might not like walking, but they'll stand up if it's time to sing. I know that a lot of kids, there's sometimes there's just nothing to do. 
in life, other than sit and maybe play a video game. If there's a group and you enjoy singing with them, you, you actually uh, you, know, you go out there, you make some friends, you uh, you you enjoy a group activity, and I, it's good for people. I genuinely do believe that. I think it's good for people, and I think more people can do it than than they think they can. Oh, you are so inspiring and so refreshing. I have enjoyed this conversation.